Well, it's Jeff and Wilma at Budrum. I just want to show you this bread that we just made. We made some elephant foot yam French bread. Wilma's just having a taste of the crust. Mm, and you're really eating this. Yummy. Ab mm. Absolutely beautiful. And I just sliced some up to put in the toaster. And have a look at it. And we're going to show you how we made this. Look at that. Beautiful. So I'm just going to dice this up fairly small. Because it's going in, as well as the bread, it's going into the curry. I've got a heavy bay saucepan here with some water in I'm going to bring it to the boil and cook it for about 15 minutes. That's kind of it. So what I'm going to do is just strain the water out of this elephant's foot yam. I'll let that cool down. Now what I'm going to do is get one cup of this elephant's foot yam and I'll put it through my ricer. It's coming out all right. I might put this pearl dish together. So in the pearl dish I made, you can see it's getting nice and bubbly and beautiful aroma coming out of there. In the pearl dish I put 700 grams of strong baker's flour and 700 mils of water and about a half a teaspoon of instant dry yeast. So with the pearl dish you use one third of the intended amount of flour and equal amount of water and then when you put your final dough together then you calculate how much water you're going to use. So in this case I'm making it 65% hydration so I'm requiring another 665 mils of water using the water that I strained out of the elephant foot yam. Yeah. I'm going to put in four teaspoons of my sea salt. I'll put in my one cup of elephant foot yam yeah, that I put through the ricer. I'm going to put in 1.4 kilos of the uh, baker's flour, of the strong baker's flour. I might just put in a teaspoon of instant dry yeast. Nice clean hand. I'm just going to mix it all through until it comes away from the side of the bucket. It's got a turning into a nice consistency. So I'm ready to turn this dough out now under my floured surface. It's turned out fairly sticky dough. And I'll use a bit of flour to clean my hands and the inside of the bucket. So with my hands clean, or fairly clean and the bucket clean, I'm just going to knead this for about 10 or 12 minutes and just you can see it's quite a loose dough and uh, I'm going to try and keep it as loose as I can and just add a little bit of flour as I need to I think that's uh, the butcher bird out there letting us know Our dough has turned into a beautiful dough. It's got a nice skin on it. It's, it's easy to work and it's nice and pliable. Absolutely beautiful. So what I'm going to do is spray my bucket with a bit of cooking spray. Put my dough in there. Put a bit of spray on top of that. Put a cover on it and let it sit in a warm spot until it doubles or even trebles in size. So as you can see, now have a look here, you can see our dough has certainly doubled in size or even more. What I'm going to do is just turn it out under this floured surface and oh we do it and a bit of flour on my hands. Just kind of do what they call a stretch and fold. Look at that. Maybe another one. Look at those bubbles. 
Mm. That's beautiful. Now that I've done it, got it to this stage, I'm going to scale out two loaves. I'm going to make them 800 each. So I put this back in the bucket and let it rise again. Cover it up. Now what I'll do with these is what they call preform the loaves. I'm just going to pat it down. Just sort of preform the loaves, and then and then put them on a floured surface, and then just cover them and let them rest for about 15 minutes. And what I have is two bannetons here, just going to dust those in readiness. Now I'm just going to form my first loaf. So just a uh, lightly floured surface, just going to pat it down and just bring it across two thirds, like that, turn it over and bring it across another two thirds and then what you do then is just put your thumb in there and bring it around and then just pinch pinch that together as you go now what I'm going to do now is I've got some sesame seeds and just, um, there's some beautiful so I'm just going to put it in my banneton and let that, just go that proof for about 25 minutes and cover it. And in the meantime I'm going to preheat the oven at 230 degrees centigrade. Well, I'm ready to put our first loaf in the oven. I'm just going to put it under here, score it, put a couple of scores on it. deep scores. Put it straight into the oven. Now have a have a, a have a bread pan on the bottom tray with some rocks in it. I'm just going to put a quarter of a cup of water in there. And that'll give us a bit of steam and then that'll help with the crust. And I'm going to set my timer for six minutes. So that's our first, oh we do. That's our first six minutes. Now I'm going to turn it around 180 degrees and give it another six minutes. So what I'm going to do now is turn it around 90 degrees and reduce the heat down to about 160 degrees and give it another six minutes. It's looking good. I'm going to turn it around another 180 degrees and give it another five or six minutes. And let's pull our bread out. Uh, this is our bread. Have a look at that. It's beautiful. Now what I'll do now is turn the oven back to 230 to get ready for the next loaf. So here's the last one coming out. There's a... Oh, they're beautiful. Amazing, Jeff. There's our results here. This is our baguette we made. Um, the last one that came out of the oven. That's our bull. So got a little bit dark that one. That's the first one that came out. What we're going to do is cut a few slices of this and see what it, how it turns out. Mm. What a beautiful crumb! Look at that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful crust. Absolutely beautiful. Now what I'll do, you hear how that crust went when I cut it? It was mm. almost. Now this is the first time I've made any of this French bread with any form of potato. So there we go. That. It's beautiful. Oh, fantastic. Now what I'm going to do as soon as this cools down. I'm just going to bag it up and put it straight in the freezer. 